Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year, happy holidays. Hope you guys did something that you really enjoy, that made you happy. I got to hang out with some friends. I had some family in town. We had a blast. We did a lot of things around town. Saw some shows I haven't seen in a while, like Absinthe. Highly recommend Absinthe. If you haven't been there, it's the little circus tent right in front of Caesars. Okay, let's go play poker. CES is in town, which is that big tech conference. A lot of people walking around with lanyards on, a lot of business suits, and usually the cash games can get pretty juicy during this time of year. So thought I would check it out, head over to the win and play some cash. So we don't have to wait too long before we start a brand new 2-5 game at the win. I buy in for 1K and I immediately love my table. There's a lot of action. A lot of people getting in there with some speculative hands, gambling, having a good time. They're actually talking to each other. It's, uh, it's a breath of fresh air. It was really, really nice to sit at this table. In the first hand I get involved in, I open king, queen, offsuit, and the low jack to 15. Cut off and button, make the call. Three ways we go to a flop of queen, nine, seven with two diamonds. I see but this one for about half pot. I go 25 and just the cutoff comes along. The turn brings an offsuit four and I wanna continue charging draws, get value from worse queens, maybe a stubborn nine X and yeah, I think it's just easier to play as a double barrel. So I bet 65 and the cutoff goes all in for 300. You only had about 300 to start the street and didn't take him too long to just think about going all in. I don't see people raise over a double barrel on the turn as a bluff too often, especially all in. This guy's a recreational. He was just here for a wedding. Super nice, very friendly. Uh, I just, I don't know what I'm beating here for value. And as far as bluffs go, I think, you know, he could have some combo draws that he wanted to turn into a bluff. Uh, I don't know, but something like Jackson of Diamonds makes sense if he would go, but I think he would probably just raise flop with something that strong. I have the King of Diamonds, so we can't have something like King Jack of Diamonds or King 10 of Diamonds. <laughs> so I don't know. I kind of narrowed it down to, I'm gonna fold. So that's what I did. I just folded this hand. Not sure if that's right, but I don't think he's doing this with any worse value. And uh, if he bluffed me, nice hand, sir. He claimed to have a pretty interesting hand that I never would have put him on. Yeah, I have pocket aces. Ace club, ace diamond. What? Yeah. Claims to have pocket aces. Not sure if I believe that, but <laughs> he did show the guy next to him who happened to leave conveniently. I don't see it as a lie. I think he might've had it, but it's just pretty funny. Definitely didn't put him on aces. Glad I made the correct folds. So this next hand I'm only including because I wanted to introduce you to my new table, Nemesis. She's gonna be a future villain in a lot of hands, so look out. She opens the cutoff to $30, just a mere $30. I'm in the small blind with pocket nines, make the call. Flop comes down, ace, queen, jack, all clubs. And I check to her, she bets 60 into 65. So once again, pretty huge bet, but with a club that I don't know is live, fourth pair to the board, I'm gonna be folding. In this one, the low jack opens to 15 and I look down at queen, 10 of clubs and the high jack. I'm gonna three bet this, I make it 45. Low jack had been snap folding to every single one of my three bets so far and I'd been doing it a lot. So why not do it with this hand? Small blind who was playing pretty wide ranges all over the place, cold calls and the low jack folds, surprise. Flop comes down, a seven, three rainbow, no club, pretty meager looking flop for us, but it's a really good one for us to see bet because small blind probably doesn't have a lot either. So when he checks it to me, I bet 35. He snap folds and we take down a small pot. And if you're thinking, wow, Ashley, you just showed us a hand where you three bet and C bet, good for you. Well, the only reason I'm showing you this is because it's the only hand I win for quite a while. It's about to get really bumpy, okay? Let me have my moment. <laughs> so my lady villain from earlier who made it 30 in the cutoff limps this time from the low jack. I'm in the hijack with ace jack offsuit. Might be a little loose, but I made it 25. Button calls, same guy who's been in a ton of hands. She calls as well. So I got the two players that are playing the widest range of hands in the pot with me, feeling decent about it. Flop comes down, queen four deuce with two clubs. Remember, I have the ace of clubs. When it checks to me, I decide to bet 35. Like I said, they both have really wide ranges. They don't really necessarily need to hit this flop that often. I have the ace of clubs, I'm going for it. But they both come along. All three of us see the turn comes the seven of clubs. So front door flush gets there, but I have that key card. I got the ace of clubs. When low jack lady villain checks to me, I bet 125. I'm gonna size way up on this turn because I wanna be probably pretty 
polar when I bet this turn in a three-way pot. Button folds and Chica and the low jack comes along. The river is an offsuit king. So now I'm trying to think about what she has. If she's calling that huge bet on the turn, she either has a queen or she has a flush, but she can't have enough flush because I got these clubs. And so on the king, I think, all right, should I be bluffing this? I don't know. I don't know if I can get her to fold a worse flush and I'm not really in the business of trying to get her to fold a worse flush, but I definitely can get her off of a queen. So I go for it because preflop, I'm probably not gonna raise ace 10 off over her limp. In those positions, it was just too early of positions. So this is literally the worst offsuit ace I have and I have the ace of clubs. So the other offsuit aces now made a pair. Ace queen, ace king, both made a pair. So definitely would check back this river with those hands. So this is literally my only offsuit ace. So I decided to go for it. I bet 350. And before I can even get my stupid bet across the line, she just tosses in her chips. Yeah, I bow my head in shame. And you know, I think I make one of the biggest mistakes of the whole hand and I muck my freaking hand out of embarrassment. I muck my hand, I didn't flip it over and that cost me all the information that I basically just paid for, even though it was in a bluff form. I just paid for that information. I didn't flip over my hand. Um, I was just like, kind of like shell shock because she, she just called me so quickly. And I just made a huge mistake by, by mucking my hand. I didn't get to see what she had because it makes a big difference whether she's calling me with, you know, a king high flush or if she snap calls me with just, you know, one pair. So I really, really needed to flip my hand over to get that info for the rest of the session. Huge mistake and lesson for all of you guys out there. Don't be embarrassed about your bluffs. Just flip them over. Yeah, that's fine. So not gonna lie, feeling pretty frustrated at this point, but I add on $700 to my stack because the same two people at my table that are in a lot of hands are still given lots of action. There's still hope to be had that I can dig myself out of this hole if I can just hit a flop, make something happen, win some chips off of them. So about 20 minutes after that ace jack hand, lady opens up the hijack to 15. Guy who always folds to my three bets calls the cutoff. And I look down at ace queen suited on the button. Easy squeeze spot, I make it $75 to go. Lady, no surprise, comes along. And guy, no surprise, folds to my three bet. Flop comes down, 1088, rainbow. She checks to me and I think I'm a little trigger shy versus her, I check back. I think that I'm ahead of a lot of the stuff that I'm getting to fold and then she's just gonna call with pairs, so I don't mind the check back. Turn is a seven of spades, bringing you back to her flush draw. She quickly leads 75. There's about half pot. You know, I could make a really thin call, but I don't see the point. So I just fold. Same lady, limps under the gun one, low jack, limps behind, and I look down at ace king offsuit. I make it 35 to go, and I'm praying this is finally my shot against this lady. She makes the call, low jack gets out of there, so we're heads up. Once again, first my nemesis. Flop comes down, queen six three with two clubs. So once again, not much going on for me. I have two overs and that's about it. She checks to me, I'm gonna check it back because since that last hand I played with her, it's been about 15 minutes and every single time she's in hand, she just snap calls the flop. I've seen her over call in multi-way pots with bottom pair on the flop, which normally is just not gonna be good. I've started to develop this read that like, yeah, she's really call happy and ace king is got enough showdown value. I can just check it back. The turn is a deuce of spades, complete brick. And now she leads her favorite number. She bets 75 into the pot of 80. So huge bet, not gonna stick around to this size bet. I make the fold. Oh, another thing to note, yes, she's a station, but she really hasn't been buffing either. So it's kind of a win-win. Like I can get value from my good hands and I can get the showdown easier because I mean, I saw her not even pull the trigger with like Jack High in a spot where the board was better for her. So. I'm just keeping my eye out for these good spots. I'm just trying to keep my cool, keep my patience, and um, hope for that spot to get some value from her comes. In this one, under the gun one, limps. He's the one that's been in a lot of pots. Next to act makes it 20, and the cutoff three bets to 60. When it folds to me, I'm in the big blind. I looked out at pocket queens. So we have all this action. I'm in the big blind with pocket queens off of a starting stack. I think I had like 675 or something to start the hand. So less than 150 bigs. I'm gonna go for the four bet. I'm cold four betting, so I don't really need to go that big, especially off this stack size. So I make it 150. 
folds back around to the cutoff and he makes the call. So heads up to a very big pot. Flop comes down 744 rainbow. Pretty ideal flop for pocket queens, I would say. I bet 150 and he says nice hand and folds. So yay, we win a pot, you guys. All right, let's keep the pocket pairs coming. Under the gun opens to 15 in this hand. I look down at pocket jacks on the button. I may get 45 to go. Big blind, same dude, bend in every hand. He cold calls from the big blind and under the gun makes the call as well. So I'm very likely to have the best hand here with pocket jacks. Keep your fingers crossed for a low flop, which that's what it comes. Flop comes nine, nine, three rainbow. Really great flop once again. Both of them chuck to me and I bet 65. So about half pot in a three bet pot paired board. I just had in my mind, I was gonna go half pot. So I bet 65. Big blind gets out of the way and under the gun surprisingly raises, but it's pretty tiny. He makes it 140, slightly more than a min raise. Not sure what this is about. Maybe he's just trying to get a little tricky, trying to get me to just fold random C bets that I'm unsure about, or he just has a nine, maybe pocket threes. I don't know. I feel like he would just call pocket threes. It's just so strong. Doesn't need to worry about it. If he just did this with pocket tens, for example, I'm still ahead of that, pocket eights, pocket sevens. Sometimes people just do these little min raises to kind of like, quote unquote, see where they're at. So I make the call. Turn comes a deuce of clubs, bringing a backdoor flush draw. Opponent doesn't slow down. He bets 150, not a very big bet. I'm going to make the call again, but you know, still treading lightly here. River's an offsuit five. He goes in the tank. Goes all in. I had about 515 left behind. Really not happy with this spot. Just a day full of tough spots like this. I mean, there's no easy spots. Everything has been just like marginal. And the, when things are marginal, it can make you feel like you're a terrible poker player because everything is right on the line. It's really not a good feeling. <laughs> but yeah, I went in the tank for a while. I ended up folding. I didn't think that I didn't think he was gonna go for value with a hand like tens this way. I think that would be completely overplaying and he's you know good enough to know that he would be overplaying it in this spot. So I think he either had some random nine or perhaps pocket threes. I folded later on, he did claim he had just a nine. God, we got away from that one. I, don't, I just don't see people bluffing enough this way, honestly. So I just had to give him credit for it. Made the fold, moving on. So it's definitely been a one step forward, three steps backwards kind of night. In this hand, under the gun opens to 20, cutoff calls, button calls, small blind calls, and I'm in the big blind with pocket eights. I make the call off of 100 big blind stack, and honestly, I'm feeling kind of over it at this point at the table. Anyway, flop comes down, king five three, we're five ways, and it checks around. The turn is another king, checks all the way around to the cutoff, he bets 50 into 100, button in the small blind fold, and I think I'm ahead of enough stuff. I make the call. He could be betting seven, sixes for value. He's just taking a random stab at it when he gets checked to twice in position. So I'm gonna call. Heads up to a river, which comes in offsuit eight. So now I'm actually hoping he has a king that he slow played on the flop. Yeah, I check it over to him and he says, oh, I think I'm gonna make a nitty check back and flips over pocket nines. All right, I make a bad check. Got really lucky. Ooh, good chat. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, man. That is a nitty chat back, because you know, I could have seven, sixes, five, I could have ace high, you know, the ace deuce, ace four, or something like that. You know, he could think he was gonna get value from. So yeah, unlucky that he didn't value bet the nines, because I was gonna go for the check raise. But I'm not gonna complain, you know, because even this small $200 pot made me feel really good in this moment. Sometimes you need these small wins to bail you out of your bad mood. So then my friend in the cutoff opens to 15. I have deuces on the button. I make the call, hoping to flop a set. Both lines come along and we're off to a flop. Four ways comes ace seven deuce rainbow. Beautiful. Going as planned. PFR in the cutoff bets 30. I make the call and both blinds get out of the way. The turn is a queen of spades. This time he slows down, he checks. I bet 80 into 120. I'm gonna bet big here because I think if he does have an ace that he's pot controlling, he might be inelastic to my bet. So I bet 80, but he quickly flashes me ace four offsuit and folds. 
We gaze you show? We gaze? Yeah. Good pull. So the last 30 to 40 minutes of this session were a snooze fest. Nobody was seeing flops. It would just go raise and take it, raise and take it. We were just swapping blinds, passing the time. And when that happens, it's time to go. Just wrapped up here. Not a fun session. Do you guys ever hear that um, Ed Antonio Esfandiari quote where he always says, on the river, he's in a, a hand with an opponent and he's like, if you call, I have a value hand. If you fold, I'll show you a bluff. That's how I felt. Like I felt like I was just playing against him the whole day <laughs> where like no matter what I did, it was the wrong choice. If I chose to bluff a spot, my opponent just called down. If I chose to give up a spot, my opponent hand to hand, they would easily fold. Those are really, really frustrating days. One thing I'm kind of trying to work on is it comes from like the mental game of poker books, the Jared Tendler books. He talks about when everything is going really well for you in a session, it's really easy to play your best, right? If you equate it to like weightlifting or something, you can count that as like a rep of some like really easy, super lightweight. And then if things get piled on, if you're really tilted, if you're frustrated, if you're losing every single pot, and you can still play your best during that time, it's like you're lifting at your heaviest. I don't know if that really makes sense how he explained it, but I like to think of it like that. Like, okay, yeah, I'm really frustrated and I'm really tilted in this session. I just have to picture it like I'm just lifting much heavier weights and tomorrow I'll be a stronger poker player for it. That's kind of how I deal with tilt in game. Bought in for a thousand, we added on for another 700. So total we bought into the game for 1700 and cashed out 628, something like that. So pretty rough at a 2-5 table to lose about a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars. Not great, not great at all. I hope I'm not cursed. <laughs> not, I hope I don't have like the run bad vlog curse. Some people get the run good right away. Some people run bad. The fact that so many of you are sticking with me and following some of these videos, even though the results aren't bad is really cool to see. Thank you so much for that. That's really awesome. I'm gonna go home and get some rest. Today's been a long day and guess what? We're gonna do it all again tomorrow. <laughs>